Welcome back. Oh, man. In trying to show you as realistic a picture of uh, systems, I'm going to have to show you some uh, kind of extraordinary situations that can occur. And that's going to be uh, systems that have sometimes no answer, no solutions at all, and some of them have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, And I want to show you that graphically and algebraically, see what happens with matrices. Let's look at this one. Okay, well the first thing we would do if I gave you this system, I hope you appreciate it, if I asked you to solve it with a matrix, is that you would create the matrix. Remember that one, x is 1x and y is 1y, etc. I know that, dude. So we'd represent this with the matrix that I've shown here. Four ones and the eight and the four. Okay, now, of course we want somehow to get that uh, diagonal ones and all the rest zeros in the coefficient matrix. Remember your goal, right? So, let's see, what would we do first? We're going to try and get those zeros because we already have the ones. And I made this uh, rather easy one on purpose so we could get through it quickly. You'll see. First thing I would do, I guess, is I'd multiply row 1 by negative 1 and add it to row 2. And I have to replace one of the rows with that. Okay, I'll replace row 2 with it. Okay, so multiply row 1 by negative 1, of course an opposite there, and add it to row 2. And look what we get. Well, let's see. I'll replace that in row 2. And what happens? I got zeros coming out the woo-wah. Problem is, if I tried to change this back to an equation, Houston, we have a problem. Anytime you have all zeros in a row and uh, an any number in a constant, uh, it can't happen. Zero could never equal negative 4. So this can never happen. So anytime you lose a row, if you would, or lose the coefficient portion of it, you're going to have to say there's no solution. Anytime you get all zeros in the coefficient uh, uh, matrix in one row, uh, you're going to have to say there's no solution. Okay, so that can happen. What happened? Well, if we took the original lines, x plus y equals 8 and x plus y equals 4. Let me show you why that would be true. First thing, if I asked you to graph them, hope you know you'd solve for y. Solve that first one for y, put in some points. I'll put in 0, 1, and 2 to make it easy. Put in a 0, I get 8 minus 0 or 8. So I get the point 0, 8. Put in a 1, I get 8 minus 1, or 7, so I graph the point 1, 7. Okay, and if I put in a 2, I get the point 8 minus 2, or 6, 2, 6, so I go over 2 and up 6. Okay, and I graph that one correctly because, I, as you can see, they line up. Now let's graph the other uh, equation and see where these two meet, because that is the solution to the system, isn't it? Begin by solving for y. And let's put in, once again, 0, 1, and 2. If I put in a 0, I get 4, don't I? So let's graph the point 0, 4. And if I put in a 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, so I graph the point 1, 3. If I put in a 2, I get 4 minus 2, or 2, so I get the point 2, 2. And they do line up. But remember, the solution to a system is where the two lines intersect. These two lines are parallel. There is no solution, and they go on forever, so there's not going to be any solution. So that's what it looks like graphically. But we remember, whenever we get all zeros in a coefficient matrix, you can be sure there will be no solution. You don't have to go to the trouble of graphing. Not. OK, no solution. Now, there's another situation that can happen with two lines other than them intersecting and having a solution and parallel being parallel and not having a solution. What if I had two lines, here's one, y equals 2x plus 5, and another one that was actually the same line. 
Well, how many solutions would you have? How many places do those two lines touch in? Now what am I gonna do? They're the same line. They're gonna have an infinite number of solutions. And this is gonna happen to you sometimes. And I want you to see, especially with three uh, variables, this, I know this one only has two, but with three variables, what you're gonna do. And it's gonna be somewhat useful in business, believe it or not. It's not gonna be one of the crazy ones, actually. I have a feeling so bad stuff is about to go down. Let's do it with three variables, okay? Let's try and solve this bad boy. First, let's represent it with a matrix. Okay, so I'm going to have for the first row 1, 2, negative 1, and 0. Second row 2, 3, 1, and 1. And third row 2, 4, negative 2, and 0. Okay, it doesn't look so bad. I even have some 1's already. Okay, let's try and solve this. I want to get zeros first, remember. I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 2 and add it to row 2. Hopefully you can see what I'm going to cancel out there. Multiply row 1 by negative 2, add it to row 2, and we'll replace row 2 with that. And I'll end up for row 2 as 0, negative 1, 3, and 1. You can see why I did it, because I wanted that 0. You'd like that, wouldn't you, boy? I love zeros, especially early in the problem. So let's replace it. Okay. Next. Let's try and get some more zeros. I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 2 again. I'll play the same game with row 3. Okay. Multiply row 1 by negative 2, add it to row 3, and replace it with row 3. Hmm. It was okay for row 2, but watch what happens. When I multiply row 1 by negative 2 and add it to row 3, what happens? The whole row goes away. The whole row, not just the coefficient portion, but the uh, constant portion as well. It's zeros all the way across. Well, when this happens, we basically lost the equation completely. It's not an untrue equation because zero does equal zero. But, if we try to turn this back into equations, that would become, and the second row would become, and the third row would become what? Now what am I gonna do? Zero equals zero, that's of no use to me. It would actually be gone. Now it wasn't gone before when we had zero equal to number. It just was untrue. This one is actually gone. I want to tell you my secret now. I'll tell you what we're going to do now. Okay, I want you to understand that kind of what's happened since we've lost an equation is you could look at it as, as, as something good. We've lost a restriction. We have much more flexibility in deciding what our solution or solutions in this case is going to be. Because in this case, actually, I'm leading up to, there's going to be an infinite number of solutions. It's not going to just be any old solution. They're going to have to follow some rules, but there are going to be more than one solution. Okay? Remember, we started with three variables, x, y, and z. We still have three variables, and three equations. Now, all of a sudden, we only have two equations, so we only have two restrictions to follow, so you get the idea. We have way more flexibility, and that flexibility is going to lead to not just more solutions, but an infinite number of solutions. What do you do when this happens? Well, you're left with two equations. Let's take both equations, and we're going to solve. Pick any variable and solve for it, OK? I'm kind of used to solving for y, so I'll take this equation and solve it for y. Let's see. i got to get rid of that negative, which is really a negative 1. So I'll divide by negative 1, and I'll get y is 3z minus 1. Now we're going to play an old game that we did the very first day, and that was the game of substitution. Okay, I'm going to take what y is equal to, and I'm going to put it into the other equation instead of y. See that y next to the 2? Now it's not there anymore. Instead of y, I've put what y is equal to, 3z minus 1. 
Okay, and I'm going to solve for one of the other variables. In this case, it sure looks easier to solve for x. I put the two z's together, and I'm going to solve for x. Let's see, add a 2 to both sides. Okay, and I have y is 3z minus 1, and x is minus 5z plus 2. So those are my two restrictions. I can use any numbers I want as long as y equals 3z minus 1 and x equals minus 5z plus 2. Note that both of them, both equations, are kind of formulas based on the same letter. That would be your goal. You have to get two, uh, two equations based on the same letter, in this case z. Next. Now, what you'll do is you can put in, because I told you there's an infinite number of solutions, an infinite number of sets of solutions, if you would, you can put in anything for z. For instance, if z is 1, let's put in a 1 into both of the equations. First of all, you're already one-third done. You know what z is. z is 1. y would be putting in a 1. 3 times 1 minus 1. y would be 2. And let's put in a z, a 1 for z in the other equation. Minus 5 times 1 plus 2 x would be minus 3. So one solution to this 3 equation, which later became a 2 equation system, is that y is 2, z is 1, and x is minus 3. But I told you there was an infinite number. What if I put in a different number for z? And I can put in any number. What if I put in 20? Well, I follow the same pattern. Put in a 20. See why I solved these equations for... Uh, each of the two letters. Y will be 3 times putting in a 20 for Z. Y will be 59. And X, I'll put the, the Z for 20 in for the other equation, will be minus 98. So yet another solution is that Y is 59, Z is 20, and X is negative 98. Now there may be other restrictions in some of these word problems coming up. They may say, well, I don't want a negative number, or I don't want an even number, or whatever. But this is a way to find many, or of course an infinite number, of solutions to the system. To infinity and, beyond. and there is an infinite number. Thank you. Come again. Let's do another one. Now this one looks a little crazy, doesn't it? I wanted you to be ready. I don't want to surprise you. We know that it has infinite number of solutions. Why do we know that? Because I hope you appreciate that this is a three-variable system. X, Y, and Z, and then the constants. But it's representing only two equations. And when, whenever you have more variables than you have restrictions, or rather I should say more variables than you have equations, you're going to have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so we know that's the case. But we also know we're eventually going to have to solve for one of the variables. So we're going to have to get rid of one of them. So your old buddy 0 here again is going to be a, a, a pal, isn't it? You're going to try and get a 0 before we go into our solve and substitute mode. Okay? So we've got to do a couple matrix operations here. Let's multiply row 1 by minus 2, add it to row 2, and then replace row 2 with that. Okay, we're going to kill one of those 2's. Okay? And look what I got. There's your buddy. I put that into row 2. I've got my 0 and I'm ready to boogie woogie. Okay, let's put it in. Okay, now that I've gotten rid of one of the variables, I'm going to be okay because I can... I can turn it back into equations, and the second equation will only be a two-variable equation. Watch closely, and you'll see why I need a two-variable equation, because I can't do substitution with a three-variable equation. So I'm going to use both of these and put them into equations. First one would become x plus 2y plus z is 4. And the second one, where I got rid of the x, didn't I, would be minus 2y minus 3z equals negative 6. Okay, now, once again, we know since we have three variables, 
but only two equations that we're going to have an infinite number of solutions. So, but those solutions, they're not just wing wang in it. They're, they're uh, going to have some equation limitations on them. And we want to find those equations. So what do we do? And I thought you might remember. We're going to pick one of them and solve for one of the letters. Now, I picked the second one because it only has two letters. And that's what I, remember, that's what I tried to create. So let me solve for y. I don't have to always solve for y, but in this case I will. Add 3z. Divide by what? Negative 2 to get y alone. And I'll get y equals negative 3z over 2 plus 3. Okay? Now I know what y is equal to based on z. I'm going to take that and put it into the other equation instead of what? Instead of y. Okay, see where the y was? Now there's a minus 3z over 2 plus 3 instead of that. Okay? And what I'll try to do now, since I have the one equation y based on z, is, file, is to find another equation x based on z. Then I'll be able to put in numbers for z. Okay, well, let's solve this bad boy for x then. I multiplied through by 2. 2 times minus 3z over 2 is minus 3z. And don't forget, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, now let's add the like terms of the z's. And I get minus 2z. Now i got to get x alone. So I'm going to subtract a 6 from both sides. And then add a 2z. And now I have two equations. One is y equals a, a formula based on z, and another is x equals a formula based on z. How do we finish this one off? Do you remember? You've done all the work. We just put in various numbers for z. How do I pick those numbers? Well, sometimes the word problem will help you to pick them, but if it doesn't, you can pick any value for z. Okay? Of course, if you get any value, of course we'd pick zero, wouldn't we? But I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make it that easy on you. I'm gonna put in a two for z, and let's get one of these solutions, one of these sets of numbers that is a solution to this system. If I put in a two into the first equation, that made it easy, didn't it? Canceled out, and I get zero. The two's canceled, and I get minus three plus three, and son of a gun, y is zero. So I am being a little easy on you. And I put 2 into the other equation, and x is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4 minus 2. x is going to be 2. So a possible solution is y is 0, z is 2, x is 2. That would work. How would I find another solution? Well, plug a different z in. Be a real troublemaker, I'll put in 8. If I put in 8, let's see, minus 3 times 8 over 2... I'm going to get minus 12 plus 3. I'm going to get minus 9 for y. And I put the same 8 into the other equation. And I get 16 minus 2. I get 14. So another solution would be these set of numbers. Negative 9, 8, and 14. To infinity and beyond. Remember, there's an infinite number of answer sets, and they are sets of answers. They do have to follow these limited restrictions, at least somewhat limited, compared to what we had before where we only had one answer. Okay? I'm back, baby! Okay, let's try and do a word problem on these bad boys. In business, you're going to have a lot of restrictions. You're going to have restrictions on machinery, restrictions on people, restrictions on hours, restrictions on laws. You're trying to make them all work at the same time. So this really will happen all, uh, often. Okay, Let's look at an example. The Acme PC company, computer company, makes three models of printers. The first model, Model A, has 2 meg of memory. Model B has 4 meg and Model C has 6 meg. The higher the meg, the better the printer, by the way, the faster. Acme buys memory for their printers in bulk, 500 megs a week. So that's a limitation there. 
It takes three hours to assemble each Type A printer. It takes a little longer, four hours for Type B, and five hours for the expensive one, Type C. And the company has a limitation. Here we go. Has a limitation of 560 hours available for assembly each week. There's another restriction. The Type A printer takes five minutes to test. We're going to have to test it. Type B takes eight minutes, and Type C takes 11 minutes. The company has 1,060 minutes available, man time at least, for testing each week. How many of each model can be made to use all available assembly and testing time? Okay. Now look what we're trying to ask for. What, how do we start off with these problems? Always name what your variables are. So let's see. I'm going to let A be the number of printer A. How many printer printers of type A I'm going to make? Okay, and I, I didn't do X, Y, and Z so it wouldn't be confusing. I'm going to do A, B, and C. B will be the number of printer B's that I make, and C will be the number of, of printer C's that I make. Okay? Okay, now let's start looking at restrictions and creating some equations. First of all, I've got 500 megs of memory a week, and for every Model A I use 2, for every Model B I use 4, and for every Model C I use 6. So I hope you could see that your equation would be 2 times A plus 4 times B plus 6 times C, the number of printer C's that we have, uh, is going to equal 500, or as close to 500 as we can get. Okay, let's come up with another equation. We use what they're talking about assembly hours. Well, we've got a limitation of 560 hours, and each printer A is going to take three of those hours, printer B is going to take four, and each of the printer C's is going to take five. So my equation, hopefully you could see, would be 3A plus 4B plus 5C equals 560, or at least we're trying to get as close to that as possible. Okay. Lastly, what do we have? Testing. And it doesn't matter that this one's minutes, as long as we're consistent in that equation. That was the point here. So I've got a limitation of 1,060 minutes. And to test printer A is 5 minutes, to test printer B is 8 minutes, and for every printer C is 11 minutes. So, typically, our equation is going to be 5A plus 8B plus 11C is the 1,060. Okay, we've got ourselves a three-variable system. This is a job for you know who. Now we create a matrix, and we're going to solve this, Billy. Okay? Okay, now we didn't do this before. We're going to finish this baby off. We're actually going to solve it. We came up with the equations. Now let's finish it off. Let's see. We're going to solve this matrix. The numbers are ugly. We don't have any ones or zeros. How do we start off? Let's start off trying to find or create some zeros. I'm going to multiply row 1 by a negative 1, subtract row 2, and add row 3, and replace it. I'm going to do minus 1 of row 1, minus 1 of row 2, and add that to row 3. Okay? And replace row 3 with it. Watch what happens here. Uh-oh. If I put that in for row 3... Son of a gun, I lost an equation. We did it quickly, didn't we? You, you were kind of cringing. Son of a gun, if you, if you subtract row 1 from row 2 and add row 3, we lose an equation. Well, no matter how it would have happened anyway, what happens when we lose an equation? Well, this is a good thing. We have less restrictions in this business somehow. We only have two equations. Let's do it again. What are we going to do? Well, I need to get a zero because I need one of these two equations to, uh, one of the two equations to have only two variables. And I see those two fours, so I'm going to try and cancel them out. I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 1, add it to row 2, 
Multiply row 1 by negative 1, add it to row 2, or basically subtract it if you would, and replace row 2 with it. And that's good. I, it doesn't matter where I put the 0 now. Okay, I'm going to put that in row 2. Okay, now I've got two equations, one of them having two variables. And it would become the first row, 2x plus 4y plus, I'm sorry, I should say 2a plus 4b plus 6c equals 500. And that 0 in the second row, it would have been a b, but it isn't. So the b just isn't there, so I have a minus c equals 60. Note that uh, there is no b there. This is not that bad. We can finish this off. Let's take the red equation, solve it for one of the letters. I'm going to solve it for A by adding C to both sides. Okay. That's one restrictive uh, equation. And that's A based on C. So I want the other one to be based on C, but I've got A, B, and C. So remember what we did? We did some substitution. Wherever there was an A, we put what it was equal to, 60 plus c. And then we had an equation, once again, with two variables. Let's multiply through the two, add up like terms, the 2c and the 6c. And now, what am I going to solve for here? In the red equation, I had solved for a based on c. What do I need to do here? I hope you know I need to solve for b based on c. Okay, let me subtract, let me start getting that b alone. I'll subtract 120 from both sides. Let me subtract 8c from both sides. And then divide everybody by 4. And I'll get b is 95 minus 2c. Well, Holy alphabet. what's going to happen here? Remember printer A, printer B, and printer C. As crazy as it looks, this is the type of answer that you're going to want in business. Some simplified uh, equations that are restrictions. Okay. Now, what about C? What about the restrictions of C? And, and We didn't talk about this before. There are some restrictions before we had put anything you wanted in for C. But let's be logical here. This is a printer business. So, there are some restrictions. As stupid as it may seem, all of them must be, you can't make negative printers, okay? So A, B, and C have to be greater than or equal to zero. And of course you would state that, okay? C, so then obviously, hopefully it's obvious, C is going to have to be greater than or equal to zero. Could be equal to zero. You could decide to make no C printers because they're the expensive ones. But that's a restriction. C will have to be greater than or equal to zero. Now B can't be negative. So what's the most, as C gets bigger, if we got C too big, uh, 95 minus 2C, if C got too big, uh, B would become negative. In fact, how, how big could C get before B became 0? Well, if it was 47 and a half, that's 95 divided by 2, C uh, would create b being negative so that can't so c is going to have to be bigger than 0 but smaller than 47 and a half and now that i think about it smaller than 47 you know why you can't make a half a printer you could but it wouldn't work very well okay so that's the kind of restrictions we'd look at look at that list of restrictions a is 60 plus c b is 95 minus 2c you can put in any c you want now as long as it's somewhere between 0 and 47, and it'll use up all your hours. Okay. Now somebody may come along with some other restriction that would limit these, but at this point you have basically 47 solutions. I should say 48. From 0 to 48 in whole printers, it would uh, restrict how many of each one you would do. So you don't really have infinite exactly because we've restricted C. Okay, hopefully you get the idea. Before I leave you, you may, you may make fun of me being a math weenie and all, but I can't resist showing you what these three variable equations look like graphically. And hopefully you'll get a better idea as to what we have been doing. 
okay now you know two variable equations uh, so like this one x plus 2y equals 11 it is a, really a collection of all the points that fit in there for instance 1 5 1 in for x and 5 in for y fits right and if I graph that, and if I graph all the points that fit into this two-variable equation, for instance, 5, 3 fits, 5 plus 2 times 3, and even negative 1, 6 fits, and actually there's many as an infinite number that fit, and if I graph all of the points that fit, I know that, dude. they line up. Hence the term linear or linear equation, as you may remember. And there's an infinite number of them, and they form it is a line. they form a line. That's the two variable ones. Well, now we've been dealing with x, y's, and z's. Prepare to be astonished. And if we take all the points, and I say points, uh, with three variables, points are come in, come in triples. For instance, the first point two, five, four we graph that in a three-dimensional graph it ends up there 5 3 3 if we graph it in a three-dimensional X Y Z axis and maybe another one negative 1 6 6 these are the ones that fit they don't line up but they do if we look at all the points that fit into this equation cool. they form a plane not a line looks like this okay a three variable equation basically the picture of it is a plane are you pondering what I'm pondering so the solution to a three variable system for instance this equation x plus 2y minus z would form a plane And another equation would form a plane. And a third equation would form a plane. And if you think about it, of course, those planes go on forever. But the place where they all meet, the solution to this three-variable system is one single point, which is a triple point if you would x y and z okay and that's what we've been dealing with most of the time Whoa. now there were some times when we had no solution for instance if we had this equation which was a three variable equation so it formed a plane and this equation that formed a plane and this equation that formed a plane and we look for the point or anywhere where that was both uh, red, green, and blue. Not. Didn't exist, did it? There is no place. So there is a time, a situation, and this is the picture of it, when, well, two of the planes are parallel, so there isn't going to be any solution to all three planes. And then there's other equations, other systems, if you would, that had many, or we say infinite number of systems. What did that look like? Once again, they were planes. A three-variable equation forms a plane. And we look at another one, forms that plane. Now, in this situation, we may have another equation that forms this plane. Now, where do these three meet where is the solution to this system well there are many solutions where they all meet and if you take all of them they form to and they form a line an infinite line because remember the planes go on forever okay so I thought you, you needed to see that so you could see what we were finding here okay because we had all three situations so, with that said, I'll leave you with this final thought. And that is, you better do the homework or you'll never get this stuff. Okay, we'll see you next time.